good morning students now i hope you are remembering our last class's discussion that was regarding the simple microscope we have discussed magnifying power of the simple microscope in both the settings means in the case of the clear vision as well as in case of the normal adjustment when the final image is formed at infinity we have discussed it in very much detail i hope you all are remembering those things followed now today if you remember i just go back slightly go back to our previous class i at last i told you that in case in order that we have to increase the magnifying power of the simple microscope right simple microscope here i just remind you m is equal to 1 plus d by f for the clear vision and m is equal to only d by f for the normal adjustment these notes are already with you i told you that in the right hand side in both the expression except from f all the things are constant what is a constant d is also a constant it is 25 cm i have told you repeatedly so only f is the variable in order to increase magnifying power we have to decrease the value of f we have to decrease the value of small f isn't it that we have already said that in order to increase the magnifying power we have to decrease the value of small f fine then what happens if i decrease the value of small f excessively right then aberrations may come into play which may affect the clarity of the final image this is why an another alternative has been opted that is in case of the compound microscope where we are using you can see two lenses we have used here two biconvex lenses very clear two biconvex lenses right and i just tell you in this case magnifying power will be increased very much actually in this the magnifying power is increased in the order of 1000 understood in the order of 1000 where in case of the simple microscope approximately in the order of order of tens here it is by 1000 definitely it is advantageous more over clarity is also achieved but how that we have to discuss so let us now come to the compound microscope this was just a background why we are using the compound microscope instead of the simple microscope now let us come to the compound microscope the figure is in front of you o and e okay o this lens is called the objective see this lens is called the objective right and this is called the eye piece the two lenses o is the objective e is the eye piece o is in front of the object so it is objective i is in front of the eye piece the eye is kept that's why it is called eye piece from the diagram it is very clear that the here aperture aperture of objective o lens o is very small as compared to that of moreover moreover focal length of o is also less than that of e so we can say that aperture and focal length of the lens o are much less as compared to those for e okay aperture and focal length now you can make notes of it also here these two lenses are coaxially arranged inside a long tube inside a long tube these two lenses are coaxially arranged okay and the distance between these two lenses can be increased or decreased normally what is done o is kept fixed e can be moved so what i have said that here 
the distance between these two lenses can be increased or decreased by an arrangement by an arrangement which is known as look it is called rack and pinion arrangement rack and pinion arrangement rack and pinion arrangement is the arrangement in which the there is a screw arrangement by which the lens e can be moved towards o or away from o along the principal axis that is called rack and pinion arrangement okay and these two lenses as we have specified their focal length and aperture they are kept coaxially inside a long tube okay this is only the construction now we are coming to the image formation what happens to the image formation here the object ab which is to be magnified the object ab which is to be magnified is placed in between capital fo and 2 fo fo stands for the principal focus of objective o stands for the objective so ab is kept in between fo and 2 fo of the lens o focus and double the focus here is kept so that its according to the property of the convex lens its sorry its real inverted and magnified image a1 v1 okay what type of the image is a1 v1 a1 v1 is the real inverted and magnified image of ab which is formed on the other side of the lens o which is formed on the other side of the lens o as shown in the figure followed that this is formed here clear that means here we can mark this distance as uo okay and this distance look this distance as vo you can just see this distance is uo uo is the object distance for the objective and a1 b1 is the image distance for the objective it is placed now i have told you many times repeatedly that now a1 b1 which is the image for the object ab that will now be acting it will serve as the object for the lens e it will act as the object for the lens e followed now what we shall do by the by using the rack and pinion arrangement means by the screw with the help of the screw i will shift the lens e in such a way that this image a1 b1 which is acting as the object for e will be within its focal length that will be distance is ue it will be within its focal length then what will happen its virtual erect its virtual virtual erect of uh, image of a1 b1 that is a to b2 is formed right according to the property of the convex lens now this is a to b2 that is erect with respect to a1 b1 but it is inverted with respect to a is formed and it is intended that it must be formed at the least distance of clear vision i mean it is ve must be equal to d i say this distance must be from ipis here optical center of the ipis this distance will be v is equal to d the final image is formed at the least distance of clear vision this is the whole thing about the image formation i hope you understood how the image is formed the object is here ab its final image is formed means uh, one more thing you might have marked that the image has been magnified twice twice two times the image has been magnified twice once it has been magnified it is becoming a1 b1 right again it has been magnified we are coming to a to b2 this is why it is magnified very much okay this is the value this is the image formation we have shown i hope all of you have understood i hope all of you have understood the image formation how the image formation occurs in case of a compound microscope when our case is first when we want to 
want that the final image is formed at the least distance of clear vision. Final image is formed at the least distance of clear vision from the eye. Okay. Okay. Very good. Then, then we are find, we want to find out the magnifying power, isn't it? I want to determine the magnifying power of this device. Suppose I want to determine the magnifying power of this device. What is the definition for the magnifying power? It is written here. Magnifying power is defined of this copper microscope is defined as the ratio of the angle subtended by the final image okay at the eye to the object at the eye mind this final image how much this final image is forming at the eye to the object this is the object it is also forming the angle at the eye when both are at the least distance of clear vision i hope it is very much identical with our previous definition when we have defined it in case of the simple microscope the same you might have might be remembering there we have cut an intercept how we have cut an intercept we have to we have said that object and image both will be at the least distance of clear vision how it is possible what we shall do we cut an intercept we cut an intercept okay b a b a equal to b to p okay and join and join p e look i will cut a b this b a equal to b to p let us say b to p and we will join this look both are at the this is at the least distance of clear vision object is at also at the least distance of clear vision okay then what is the angle subtended by the image that is beta angle subtended by the object is alpha just mark it just mark it i hope it's clear all right you just study this in the next lecture just now i will determine the magnifying power fine